what's going on, y'all? T-Bob here. And Jake as well. And you're about to watch a little OTB LSU. We're going to give you all the latest, greatest between LSU football, baseball, women's basketball, softball, and everything in between. Bottom line, if you want to talk Tigers, keep it locked, subscribe, like it, and uh, we hope you enjoy Um, Right now, I want to get into some football. We got some recruiting news and some turtle news. Imagine that. Uh, Boys, a player that y'all have watched closely over the last few years has committed to the LSU Tigers, and it's a player who has, uh, well, quite a bit of name recognition as... um, well, you'll see. Who was it, boys? It was Keelan Moses, Keelan uh, the Moses. younger brother of Dylan Moses. He's okay. 2025, four-star linebacker, plays both ways at U-High and does it really well. He's kind of their short yardage power back, great player. I mean, sideline to sideline linebacker. They blitz him off the edge a lot. They kind of use him like Harold Perkins was used last year as a freshman, sometimes in the middle, sometimes off the edge, sometimes he's in coverage. I mean, He can kind of do it anywhere you need him to on defense. We mentioned his ability to run the ball on offense. I mean, great, great pickup there for LSU. He's going to be a linebacker on the next level, though? Yeah, he's a four-star linebacker. Okay. Okay. Heck, yeah. Uh, 2025 class looking kind of nice. 2024, I mean, we're here on the edge of early sign there. Are they going to break in the top 10? It looks like it. I mean, there's some uncommitted guys out there that are are trending LSU. Okay, look, I think, I mean, I'm not as hard as – uh some fans will be i'll i'll give a you know i'll give a thumbs up and it's so funny right that just there's like thousands of man hours and millions of dollars in planning that goes into something like this and i'm like i'll give a thumbs up if you're top 10 and if you're 11 so help me god we're going to talk about how bad the recruiting is and what an awful job it's been but that is kind of i mean i feel as long as you're staying in the top 10 you're staying relevant you're good well and then not only that i always look at like did you feel the need like remember the the greatest class in history for A&M a couple years ago, which yeah. wasn't actually the greatest class. I mean, Jimbo stargazed. He's like, I'm going to take four safeties. I'm going to take six defensive mm. linemen. I lost my entire offensive line. So what do I do? I only bring in two offensive line commitments, but I signed four tight ends. So it's okay. Like, he stargazed. He well, to be fair, Jimbo needs. does love tight ends, but that does, that does sound like bad roster. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, he didn't, he didn't fill his Bad needs. positional recruiting. So. Yeah, and I mean, we saw how it worked out. He's out now. So I, I always look at Philly needs over star rankings anyways. What's it feel like to be like a like a, like a a Georgia or an Alabama or Ohio State fan and you just get like five stars to add all your needs? It's got to feel pretty good too. Uh, but whatever, screw five stars. Dude, they never work out at LSU anyway. Eggs over Will Campbell, <laughs> shut out, legend. Uh, they kind of don't. Remember, we, we, we looked at that. Um, another athletic deep dive uh, from <clears throat> this summer. And in a lot of ways, LSU is kind of like SEC Iowa in that we are uh, one of the worst with our five stars panning out. I think it's like a less than like 50% hit rate, but uh, just absolute legends when it comes to turning three stars and four stars into the NFL consistently. So shout out Tigers. Um, Okay, so Keelan Moses committed to LSU. That's great. Um, Just a year and some change away from watching him sign. Um... Maybe something more immediate. This was, okay, so remember we had the Matt Rule clip yesterday. Do we play that on the show? Which one? Uh, Where you're talking about the price of a quarterback? um, Yeah, talking about how much much quarterback costs. Okay, so Matt Rule, speaking, and let's be clear about this as well. um, He's talking to the, the press, but by extension, you know, he's talking to his boosters, his fan base. Uh, one of the most passionate fan bases. Again, NIL is the key to Nebraska getting back. Um, they just need to convince, like Matt Rule needs to do enough to convince Warren Buffett to come back on board. Um, and, 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 and others, right? I mean, whatever the point is, Nebraska, I think, I think it's going to be one of the strengths, but, um, yesterday he's talking to me and he's like, look, if, if you want a good transfer quarterback, it, it, it's, it's a million dollars. Two million, like about like a one point five million dollars, like that's the going rate for a great quarterback uh, in in the portal. And and to be clear, again, that is Matt Rule saying, guys, we turned it over over thirty times. If you want to be good, all we have to do is fix that number, and the key is just getting a quarterback. And I thought maybe it was going to be Jeff Sims. It was not Jeff Sims. I could not uh, take the turnover out of the man, despite taking the man out of Georgia Tech. 
And and so so he has his own motivations. But after he said that, I'm looking at the quarterback transfer report market. I'm like, hey, who would fetch that? Like, do you think Notre Dame gave Riley Leonard a million? Is Riley Leonard worth a million? And he's going there, right? That's confirmed. Riley Leonard, Notre Dame. Yeah, it seems like it. Interesting. At some point, Notre Dame was like, F it. Dude. We can't develop quarterbacks. Let's just go get him. But, um, but like, would you pay a million dollars for Riley Leonard? Not with the injury he just came off of, no, because, you know, he tried to come back and play. And we, we broke down his numbers yesterday. He wasn't great after his first injury. He had the tweaked ankle. It took away his ability to run. He's not an elite passer. Yeah. He doesn't have to be, though, if he has that ability to run. He didn't really have that. And then he got hurt again. So with his injuries, with his not an elite passer, I wouldn't. But, I mean, I think he's a good player nonetheless. And then there's uh, DJU out there. I wouldn't pay a million for him, though Michigan State would certainly be somewhere by he may be looking at going if he wants to stick with Coach John Smith. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think about the other bigger names out there before the one that we're going to get to, before the actual big one, or whatever. The point is, uh, out of all the quarterbacks, there were some interesting names, but nothing that I would deem that I would pay rules uh, quoted price for. That I think that would be a bad investment. That was until... Dante Moore from UCLA hit the portal yesterday. Former five-star, was committed to Oregon forever. Bo Nix comes back. He's like, I'm out. I'm going to UCLA. Uh, Had a frisky beginning of the year where he eventually wins the starting role. And remember, going into the Utah game, he was like one of the top five highest-rated passers in the country. Uh, Limited sample size, but had been really good. Then I think he throws pick sixes three games in a row. He ends up getting benched. Not overall awful stats, though. I mean, a lot to work on. It's like 55% completion. I think he's around 1,500 yards, maybe 11 touchdowns, 10 picks, somewhere around there. Um, But a true freshman with a massive amount of talent. And I also feel pretty comfortable. I mean, look, also, like, that's kind of to begin with, that's not an awful freshman stat line. Like, there's a lot to clean up, but it's not awful. And also, I don't think Chip Kelly has the offensive touch that he used to have uh, in the past. Like, UCLA was a team this year whose strength is actually on the defensive side of the ball. And Chip Kelly got fired, right? Did we even talk about that? Not that, really. that became official, though, right? Yeah. Chip Kelly's out at UCLA. So, um, Dante Moore hitting the portal. He's from Michigan originally. So, you would imagine that uh, the Wolverines would have to imagine Michigan State be going after him hard and John Smith, even though, like, well, I say that. John Smith wants to run a very pro-style system. That feels like DJU. Uh, it is. I mean, we saw it this year. It fits him much better than we want him and Clemson were doing. Dante Moore would be wasted with Jonathan Smith. But, uh, I mean, look, J.J. McCarthy's had a lot of success, right? If you want to kind of pound out the mistakes and just focus on efficiency, short throws, taking advantage of athleticism, well, Harbaugh and McCarthy have proven to be able to do that over the last couple of years. Thinks It uh, looks like there'd be... Is, is McCarthy coming out this year? Does he have an extra year left? He has a I'm year I'm sure he left. has a year left, is but has he third, said anything well, yet? He hasn't said either way, because if you remember two years ago, Cade McNamara won the starting job over J.J. McCarthy because he was a true freshman. This is McCarthy's second year, so he's actually a true junior. He didn't okay, no, have, UCLA kept Chip Kelly. Sorry, never mind. Anyway, go ahead. He's a, he's a true junior. He's only been in there three years. So, yeah, he, he has an extra year left. No one said yet. Honestly, it was a big recruiting surprise. I mean, a lot of people thought Dante Moore was a lock to go to Michigan. So, I mean, that that's a place. Mm, so, when he went to Oregon, to it was look. already yeah. a surprise? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, the only thing that's interesting, <clears throat> would you put together a package to offer Dante Moore if you're LSU? It's tough, you know, because y- you mentioned it. He had an up and down freshman year. He did some nice things. He's probably thrown in there before he was ready. Yeah, if definitely. If I think about it. UCLA went through this exact thing with Dorian Thompson Robinson. He was an undersized guy. He got thrown in there before he was ready. By the time he was a senior, he was a great player. Mm -hmm. He's done some nice things in the NFL. So it all depends. I mean, I wouldn't throw a ton at him because he's still kind of unknown. But, I mean, I'd bring him in. Well, I mean, but that's the thing. This is going to be one of the guys that gets one to two milli probably on offer. So, So to bring him in, I feel like you have to have, let's just call it one million, right? Two Two, I'm probably out. One, five, I'm probably out. A million, as crazy as that sounds, I think you got to entertain that, man. And it kind of goes back to what we talked about in the portal, always 
trying to improve that position to eventually reach a point where whether it's a veteran backup that you try to convince to come down here or somebody maybe you're just unsure, like are we at the point where you almost have to get a guy every year? Dante Moore is the first name where you're like, huh. Also, I, I think this is where else it's staying out in my mind. Is it not impossible to play? I mean, it's impossible not to, to me, uh, to play with these ideas after watching what Jaden Daniels just did as a transfer quarterback coming in here and the athleticism on display, uh, more obviously more in that Lamar Jackson vein of player. Um, <clears throat> not to say that there's any one pathway to success. You know, I don't. You don't have to be an elite runner to be a great quarterback. Not even in this offense, I would. I, I would think, even though I guess Garrett Nussmeyer is going to have to prove that. Um, but yeah, I doubt there's any more to LSU juice. But kind of to my point about why winning the Heisman matters so much, I think you know if 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 money's not the deciding factor or if your money is equal with whatever else is being offered or you can equally offer it, I think from a pure pitch standpoint, being like, hey, man, two transfer quarterbacks have come in here and won the Heisman in the last five years, including one that plays a very similar style of football uh, that, that that you do. Like Mike Denbrock proving that he can have uh, just immense success with a quarterback. And really, Brian Kelly, which... Brian Kelly couldn't say that before. This is Brian Kelly's first ever year he's had dominant quarterback play. Like, if you, that was actually one of my biggest concerns during the year, is if you go back and you look at Brian Kelly's quarterbacks, um, especially now with how spoiled we've become, they look pedestrian. Like, meh. Like, like really nothing to write home about. Now, Denbrock broke off when had those really good years, and since the, especially the Desmond Ritter year, and that's where kind of he ended up uh, surpassing whatever Kelly's quarterbacks had ever done. But now he's obviously outdone himself with uh, the development and Jaden Daniels and Joe Sloan's done a great job. So, I mean, I think you would have a strong pitch to Dante Moore. Um, I just wonder if you would deem it necessary. And, and this is where I was thinking as well, why bowl season is actually so interesting now. If Jaden Daniels leaves... I mean, then bowl season becomes a super extended statement uh, period for Garrett Nussmeyer. And, and so it's like, you know, the more things change, they, there's still value. Maybe the value is different. Like back in the day, the value, you know, way back in the day really was just going to a bowl and winning a bowl. And everybody played in it because it absolutely mattered. Somewhere along the line, we realize that, ah, you know, the you know the New Year's Day Bowls are kind of the best. The other ones are fun. They're kind of whatever. Um, then especially with the advent of the playoff, New Year's Six. Like, okay, yeah, there's some pride there. But, like, even a New Year's Six, if it's not a playoff game, your best player may skip. And now we're to the point where, like, if you're a true NFL prospect and you're not playing in, yeah, everything's contextual. But kind of on the whole, you're not playing in the playoff. Um, well, it might behoove you to go get ready for the NFL where you're going to have to do things like run 40s, jump verticals and broad jumps and all the sorts of things that you don't do with football training. And so, yeah, the bowl games you could say have lost luster because they're not going to feature some of the best players, but I'll be damned if you're a fan of a team and if it is an infinitely interesting to kind of get a preview of what next year's team may look like, right? some of those younger weapons that are now going to be asked to do larger roles and have basically a full camp to prepare for it. I mean, you get 15 practices. So, like, if you know Jaden Daniels isn't playing and you have Garrett Nussmeyer, he gets 15 practices to get ready to play in a game. That's pretty awesome. And that's fun. And for Nuss, it comes with its own, like I said, it is a it is an extended sort of tryout to say, no, you don't need to go waste money on Dante Moore, you don't need to go do this or that. Sure, you want to bring in like a like a like a Petrus. Well, Petrus is going to go somewhere and play. But you get the point. Like if, if you think you have somebody that you can bring in to add depth to the room, and maybe you're convinced they'll compete. That, that's that's whatever. But you don't need to overcommit because I am the guy, and uh, that's going to be exciting to see. And, and look, I'm you know that's if Jaden Daniels doesn't play, I don't know why he would. But that's I, I also can't make that decision for him. Um, so bowls are different. But they are uh, still very interesting. Wow, Jake, what incredible takes. I mean, those guys, they're just the best. Uh, I think so. And if you think so, again, hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications we post every single day here on OTB LSU.